whip, switch to sports mode. Hold it in the road. When you get so mad, you can explode. Hold it in the road. Bro, just stay focused on your goal. Don't let them crack the mold. The finish line straight ahead, bro. Hold it in the road. When life switch to sports mode. Hold it in the road. When you get so mad, you can explode. Hold it in the road. Bro, just stay focused on your goal. Don't let them crack the mold. The finish line straight ahead, bro. Hold it in the road. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Holding the Road with Mr. Gray Fox, Big Bad Harold. Today, we have the pleasure of sitting down with journalist. Uh, let me make sure I get it all right now. Journalist, uh, barber, content creator, yeah. Christopher Cuts Lawrence. I almost, almost Christian Lawrence. Oh damn! Yeah, he good. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. I like it. You know I'm okay. saying add a little comedy okay. to it. Okay, all right. Yeah. That's what's up. So we'll, 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 we'll move on forward from that. Yes, sir. What's happening with you, good brother? I'm doing good. Thank y'all for having me. Oh yeah, we appreciate you taking the time, bro. Before we get this party started, I gotta ask you this right here. We're gonna do it a little bit different because you told me you was an athlete, right? right? Before we get into anything else, LeBron, Kobe, or MJ? As far as like who I'm picking, who's the goat? Mike. Mike. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Now you originally from? I'm from Tampa. Okay. Yes, sir. Tampa, Florida, born. Class Florida. of. Class of. I graduated high school in 2019, and from. I went to man. I went to a lot of schools growing up. I was always moving around a lot. I had eight other brothers and sisters, so I grew up in a blended family. Eight, I had, yeah, eight man. I had some okay. from my mom's side, some from my dad, and then I had stepbrothers and stepsisters. So okay, we was all you know. We made it work. <laughs> I remember some tough times. We was always moving around a lot. But as far as school goes, I think I went to like seven different schools. Mm -hmm. Um. I went to two high schools, mm -hmm. and the high school out in Tampa, I went to George Steinbrenner's high school. And if you're familiar with George Steinbrenner, he was the old owner of the Yankees. Okay, yeah. 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 So uh -huh. I went to his high school uh, for sports, and then I transferred to another high school called Gaither. Gaither, they've always been like a prominent school. Um, I transferred there to get more looks as far as basketball, mm -hmm. but I did graduate from Gaither in 2019. Mm -hmm. And I went on to attend FAMU. Everybody know, you know, the biggest, the biggest HBCU out there. <laughs> yes, sir. And I graduated with a broadcast journalism degree in 2023. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's let's back up a minute because you told me um, uh, your balling skills. So so you was out there on the, on the hardwood. Man. So, actually, my first sport, believe it or not, was soccer. Okay. Um, I started out when I was... Three years old, I believe. Yeah. And then I transitioned to football at four years old. I mean, in Florida, like everybody, they start pretty young. So mm -hmm. transitioned to football. Uh, my dad, he actually played in college. And obviously the goal for me was to go to the league. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't, football? Or? Yeah, football. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So my father, he went to uh, D1 AA school um, called Cheney University up in Pennsylvania. So my family, my dad's side is from Philly. Mm -hmm. My mom's side is from a small country town in, in Florida called Denellen, uh, right outside of Ocala. So yeah, the goal was for me to go to the league and as far as football, but I I wasn't like a big contact type of guy. I was always fast and quick. Yeah. But I remember by the time I was eight years old, I had like three concussions. So Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I, I stopped playing in eighth grade and then I – I started playing basketball when I was in sixth grade. I always loved it. My favorite player growing up was Steph. Okay. I could relate to him a lot. He was a small, undersized guy. I always had to work for everything he got. Uh huh. Yeah, he could always shoot really good. And that was my specialty. I was always a good shooter. Um, as far as high school, I averaged 18 and 6 my senior year. I okay. got a, some D2 and D3 looks, but not D1. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't to that standard as of yet. I also graduated when I was 17, so I graduated really early. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, man, that was that was my passion. I like I played sports growing up. I was okay. – I never really tapped into my creative side until I got to college. 
Now, check this out. Yeah. You get a steal. Mm-hmm. You coming down the court. You finna bang that thing or you finna lay it up? In high school, I could I could only lay it up. I would, <laughs> if I laid it up, I'll, I'll probably slap the glass or I'll try to do it like a reverse lay. Right, you right, know, You right. know how Kyrie be doing those yeah, deadly type yeah, of finishes? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I started dunking... I started dunking going into my senior year, mm-hmm. but as far as in game dunks, nah, I wasn't dunking in high school oh, in game. Okay. But in AAU, I did have a couple of dunks because okay. AAU is a little more relaxed, you know. So, so no Vince Carter, you finna, nah. you know, put your put your elbow in the ring and nothing like that. Nah. I, I wasn't that guy when it came to that. But shooting, yeah, I'll, I'll bust a couple threes on you. Fam, you bought you to Tallahassee. Yeah. Immediately after uh, after high school. Immediately after, so growing up, I kind of knew. Family was gonna be my school. I'm mm-hmm. a fourth generation rattler. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know if I got the generations right, but my uncle went, my grandfather, my mother, my cousin, a sister, brother, and another cousin. So okay. I don't know how many generations that okay. is. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. So fam, you in the bloodline. Essentially, yeah. That's exactly what's up. Yes, sir. Before we go further now, because like I said, we ask we ask everybody this question, and we'll be doing you a huge disservice if we don't ask. Now, I'm going to give you Pac and Biggie. Mm-hmm. Top five MCs all the time. Top five? Top five. What's your top five? You know me, I'm only 22, so I got to speak hey man, hey, with my it's, it's time, It's on you, too. bro. Your, your top five going to be different from my top so, five. And, and no, and no, <laughs> in no particular order. Man, and, and, and no judgment. No judgment. All right. Obviously, you got to put Pac and Biggie in there. Oh, uh, now we, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got Wayne. I got Lil Wayne. Okay, okay. Got, a lot of people don't give Wayne his credit now. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Andre Three Stacks because I feel like he's always left out. Okay, okay. Um. I like Jay Z, but I don't. I don't think he. You know, it's yours. You I like Jay Z, but I'm not the biggest fan. I'll give him his respect. Uh huh. MC cannot be. Can I put an artist in there? Like someone. Do you think, bro? Do you think? I'm, I'm gonna do two more. A lot okay. of people don't talk about them or give them their credit. I'll say Pharrell Williams. Oh yeah. And Kanye West. Oh yeah. In no particular order, but the reason I say those two is because. They can not only rap, they can not only sing with melodies, they can produce, they can write. They're creatives, they own, like, they're over fashion brands. A lot of people don't know, but Pharrell Williams was the second black man to be over Louis Vuitton, mm-hmm. the, the whole fashion, you know, mm-hmm. over that department. And Kanye, we obviously know whatever he puts out is a hit. No matter oh, yeah. What, whether it oh, be yeah. clothes, shoes, um, interviews, anything. So. Mm-hmm. That would be my top five. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm a big fan of all those you just mentioned, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's dive back into uh, fam you for a minute, bro. Okay. Your college experience. I mean, what got you into journalism? So, originally, I came into fam you wanting to be an orthodontist. I had just got my braces off, man. I remember it was a long process, but it was worth it. So, me, I'm all about trust in the process, as Joel and B would say. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to do that because I wanted to help people out. I've always been someone to encourage somebody or help people out. And I know with a lot of people's teeth, it could be insecurity. So I said, oh, okay, okay yeah. you know, I could do this, make people have a better smile, you know, show off that, that grill a little bit, and mm-hmm. then also get some good money with it. But when it got down to the details and everything, I know it really wasn't a a scientist or a mathematician. I was more of a creative. Mm-hmm. So what made me switch to journalism was, I remember my father and I had a conversation about playing sports. And as I mentioned earlier, I had D2 and D3 offers, mm-hmm. but I wanted to come to FAM because they are D1, but they're a smaller D1 school. So I was like, okay, you know, I could I could try out, try to make the team or whatever. My freshman year, I ended up making the first cut, but not the second cut. And then my second year was COVID, so no walk-ons. And after that, I kind of just gave it up. But what I wanted to stick with journalism is because I knew I could speak with athletes, be around that type of realm, 
you know, be be a on air personality or something like that. So that's what made me switch into journalism. Did you get to do any of that over there? I mean, did you where did you intern at? Did you did you man? So it's crazy. I I never really interned with anybody, but my grandfather he's a he's a photographer mm-hmm. and always had a lot of creative friends growing up. So mm-hmm. I kind of just took a page from everybody and made it to my own book. You know. Right. That's how I like to see it is I, I took a page and made it to my own book. So I've gotten past a lot of my peers from just being in different rooms with different people. Mm-hmm. Um, say, for instance, even in this room, I'm getting little ideas that creativity is buzzing already. So I would okay. do that. I, I didn't have a particular internship, but it was kind of just me putting my brain to work. That's exactly what's up. Yeah. I got to ask you this, man, because uh, this is sort of a hot topic. Yeah. Uh your time at FAM, mm-hmm. what did you guys spring break at? Uh, spring break. So freshman year, we had COVID, man. So my college experience was kind of... It was a little dull. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so yeah, we had uh, COVID. I, I spent spring break at home at the crib, but it was a good time because I was able to be by myself and really lock in, right. reflect on what happened my freshman year, see things I could have done better, mm-hmm. things I've, you know, just a self-reflection. So that's why I spent spring break at my freshman year. Sophomore year, sophomore year, I went to Clearwater Beach. That's right outside of Tampa. Uh-huh. I just hung out with some friends, chilled there for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, junior year, by that time, I I met my girl, so... Oh yeah, what we do. I'm pretty. I, I think we took a cruise or something. I don't know. Okay. And then senior year, I was really locked in with as far as cutting. I was on you know the mission trying to stack up and get towards my other business goals. Right, yeah. right, right. So, so no wild times. You know what I'm saying? And none of that from the college experience. You know what nah, I'm saying? See, you you was more locked in. Yeah. And, uh, goal driven. And that's the thing about me. I I call myself a popular loner. A lot of people know me, but. I'm really cool with like being by myself or that close knit. Like growing up, I said I had a a lot of brothers and sisters, so that's really my friends right there. And then I got a couple, maybe two or three, you know, solid. I'm not gonna say I don't have solid homies, but you know, what I'm saying that I talk to on a daily mm-hmm. basis. So I did have my fun, but at the end of the day, I knew what I was here for. I'm not, you know, penny loafing. I'm not trying to graduate <laughs> in six, seven years, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to get it. So right, right. That's what's up. Well, you know, I had to ask that, man, because, you know, man, they done came out. I mean, they just got a full blitz on uh, on spring break, man. Mm-hmm. They just trying to just cancel that all together. You know what I mean? They don't, you know, especially us. Yeah. They don't want us nowhere. Yeah. Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can remember I can remember back when uh, over there in Panama City Beach, they had ripped the runway over there. Mm. And Panama City Beach looked like Daytona Beach. And, I, you know, that's probably, you know, a little bit too far back for you. Right. But, you know, right now, Freaknik is is being brought up into the spotlight. Yeah. But spring break down there in Daytona? Yeah. Off the chain. Good Lord, it was off the chain. This this year or? No, 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 no. And days past. I mean, they done, they done basically wrecked it all over the place now. You know what I'm saying? But when they had ripped the one way over there in Panama City. Right. And... Oh, um, yeah, and wow. and oh, I think I think my dad my dad did uh, show me a couple of videos, but he said a big one was in Panama City too. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's oh, Panama so that's, City Beach. I, yeah. I thought you were saying Daytona. No, that's where it was really popping off at, right? Oh, but when Panama City Beach started looking like Daytona, they started putting the brakes on right. spring break all together, and that kind of is done trended pretty much. All over the place. You know what I mean? But uh, getting back into fam, mm-hmm. you you also, you was you was pursuing a degree in journalism. Mm-hmm. And then you got a trade in, uh, yeah, what is that? What is that? What, cosmetology? Yeah. So, like I said, I've always been a creative. So, mm-hmm. 
the only reason I went to school, I didn't, my bad, I forgot to tell y'all this, but I actually had a full ride scholarship with my grades. So okay. I've always, I've always been locked in here mm -hmm. and here and, you know, here as far as like, that's how I grew up since I had a lot of brothers and sisters, my parents and a support group that was around us. It wasn't just my parents who raised us, it was my grandparents, um, aunts, uncles, family, friends, they was always like on us. Like they don't want us to be in the streets mm -hmm. and that. So I was always pushing myself to get to that next level, whatever it be. So I knew, I was like, okay, I'm not a D1 athlete, but I'm a, a D1 student. You mm -hmm. know? Coming out of school, I had a 4.6 GPA out of high school, man. Wow, yeah. boy. Hey, I, was a, I was on the yeah. other end of the spectrum, man. Yeah. You understand what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was always like, I'm not going, I know it's going to be tough for my parents to pay for me to to go to college. So I was like, okay, like how can I help myself and help them out? Mm -hmm. and I did it with my grades. And I had a 4.6 because I had college courses while I was in high school. So I took and passed a lot of college courses too. So I had that 4.6, and then it allowed me to get the Florida Bright Future Scholarship. And I came to school, and I was like, okay, you know, college is college is not really hard. It's about doing your work. and mm -hmm. Staying focused. Staying focused, you know, all, all that good jazz. But I knew – I know I couldn't sit down at a cubicle nine to five all day. That right. wasn't me. You know, like even even just how I dress, I like to dress how I want. I like to travel when I want. I like to say what I want. Mm -hmm. I like to have my own platform. So how I got my own trade was my cousin, her name is China. She's another barber in the Tallahassee area. Mm -hmm. um, our grandmothers are sisters, so I didn't have any older male cousins on my mom's side, and that's the side that I really grew up on. Mm -hmm. On my dad's side, everybody lived in Philly, as I was saying. But she was a person who I looked up to. She was my older cousin. And I remember it, we would be like six or seven years old, and she would just bring us into the bathroom and act like she was lining us up. <laughs> she didn't have any clippers at that point, but right. it was with, you know, a, a brush or a comb. So that has always kind of been in the back of my mind. And the first person who started cutting my hair was my dad's good friend. His name was Berto. Yeah. That's why I asked his, uh, if the guy Berto you guys interviewed was Hispanic, yeah. but his right. name was Alberto. And he was a Hispanic guy. He went to high school with my dad, and he right. would always line me up and stuff. So I remember him. He was always a real cool dude. I was like, okay. You know, he had a he had some money in his pocket. I was like, dang, maybe I never thought about it, but I could be a barber one day. And... I remember the first time I cut one of my little brother's hair. I was 13 years old. I was lining him up, and the clipper slipped, and it cut his eyebrow. Oh, damn. Yeah, so that, <laughs> that definitely scarred me for a yeah. little bit. Emotional damage. No, nah, for real, for real, man. <laughs> I remember I was, I was crying because I really, like I said, I really care about people. I, right. I care about helping others. Yeah. And I didn't pick it up until COVID, and I believe COVID was a, a really good turning point in my life. Mm -hmm. I was able to sit down and say, okay, you know, even if people aren't able to go back to their jobs, some people were losing their jobs, getting laid off, losing oh, yeah. money. I said, a barber, like, they're self-employed. They can make their oh, own yeah. hours. Yeah. Everybody always going to need a cut, you mm -hmm. know? Oh, yeah. So I said, okay, let me let me do this again. And I just started picking up the clipper, and I was like, dang, like I'm actually pretty good at this. I'm probably just all these hours of me watching my cousin and watching Birdo just in the shop all day. I kind of just picked it up secondhand, and what I would do is I would start posting my videos and pictures of my brothers that I would cut, and people would just be hitting me up like, yo, like, can I get a cut? Can I slide through? I was like, mm. okay, bet. So I was trapping, you know, out of the garage as everybody starts, <laughs> you know? And then I came back to FAM, and I enrolled myself into cosmetology school, and I actually went to a world-class academy down right here off of Orange Street, I believe it is. While you're pursuing your journalism. While, while I'm doing that. So I was taking six classes, and I would, in between my classes, I would go to barber school and go back to my classes. And I also had a job at Target, working at Target. So I was, like, pedal to the metal. But I always remember telling myself, like, I'm built for this. Like, this ain't nothing, you know. It's easy. Man, that drive is unbelievable. Me and Harold, man, we done sat down and we done talked to some uh, 
Right. Entertainers, we didn't talk to law enforcement officers. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we we didn't talk to cre- uh, content creators. Uh, we didn't. So far, we've talked to a, a a very diverse group. And I'm gonna tell you this here, bro. That drive is off the charts that you got, man. I mean, it is amazing. You know I what I mean? Appreciate that, bro. Man, that drive. I'm, am, am I? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's off the charts. Man, yeah. I'm trying to tell you it's off the charts, man. See, but the thing is. Th- age. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for that. The thing is, growing up, man, I, I wouldn't say it was always a healthy thing, but I remember my stepdad, he would always push us so hard to we're like, okay, like this, this not nothing, you know, mm-hmm. this not nothing. And I got that drive from sports too. I was always trying to be the best mm-hmm. and anything that I do, I'm always trying to be the best. Mm-hmm. So I know that to got to be the, like to be the best, you have to work the hardest. There's no shortcuts to success. So yeah. even like on a normal day to day basis, what I do now is get up, go to the gym, go to the shop, record at the shop, come home, record or edit my content, um, watch some barber tutorials. Uh, and I'm actually in a barber course right now, just getting better every day. Cause I know if I'm not getting better, that next person, they gonna pass me. Like, you know, and I know that it's okay to take off days. I do take my off days to stay healthy, but for the most part, like, man, I'm, I'm all in, in, in anything that I do, so. Man, let me tell you something. I told you now, I wrote down some questions to ask you. Yeah. But as I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm about ready to throw these damn questions, you know what I mean? Because I, look here, bro. Now, your family lineup, where do you fall in that lineup? You know what I'm saying? Oldest, youngest, you in the middle? So my mother and father, they were never married. They had me. Uh, I'm the oldest from them. And then my mother has three other kids. So my mom has four in total, but I'm the oldest. Mm-hmm. And my father has two other kids, and I'm the oldest from them. And then I have one, two, three, four. Yeah, four step siblings. Mm-hmm. But I'm all of them are older than me except one. Mm. So I like I say eight, but it's really like more than eight. But eight that I actually grew up in the house with, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, man. Yeah. You blazing a trail yeah. for the ones that's coming behind you. Thank you, man. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, uh, man, that's just, that's that, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to say this right here, bro. Those siblings are, are extremely important. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They sure uh, It's a lot to learn from. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you can either follow that path or you could learn, hey, look here, that's a path that I don't want to follow. Yeah. And and the trail that you're blazing, man, I mean, it's just, it's it's unreal, man. I, uh, yeah, I'm so impressed, bro. I done forgot my damn next question or where I wanted to go. Sure. You're traveling. Yeah. You sure. understand what I'm saying? I mean, uh, you missed the international. You know what I'm talking about? I try to be. You know. Oh, yeah? Well, now, now, where did that, when, where, was, where was the first country you visited outside of the the United States? First country. First country was Bahamas. Mm -hmm. I was, I don't remember what exact age I was, but I remember going on a mission trip with my church Mm -hmm. and my mom and I went. um, That was the first country I went to, but I remember when I was a little kid, like I thought I had it rough, but I seen these people in the islands, mm-hmm. like they these people like look like us, you know. I'm like, dang, like they got it, they got it worse. But at the same time, they don't because I was speaking to my uncle the other day, and I was saying like, man, how come all these you know the Afro Caribbeans they seem like they got it the worst? And he was like, nah, they really don't. I was like, what you mean? He's like, if they cut the power grid off on this earth, who's gonna be straight? Yeah. And I had to think about it, and he said, "Think about it." And it was my uncle Dale who told me this, but he was like, "Nah, man, if they cut the power grid off on this earth, they're gonna be straight." And I said, "Why?" He said, "Because these people are able to stick to the more traditional ways of living. They don't need technology. Right? They know how to 
grow their own food from the earth. Oh, they yeah. know how to live off the land. They mm-hmm. know how to make their own clothes. They know how to wash their clothes. So it's little things like that. But every time I travel, it always opens up my mind to different perspectives. Oh, yeah. Um, I took a cruise to Jamaica. Yeah. And, uh, well, somebody in some, some serious trouble down oh, there yeah. right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But kind of, you know, going off what you said, man, I took a cruise to Jamaica and uh, got to the port. You can eat off the ground. Mm-hmm. It was, I mean, man, it was that clean. You take one step off that, you know what I'm saying, from out the gate, extreme poverty. Yep. You get what I'm saying? So I feel you on that, bro. I mean, but, and then like, who was your uncle said or whatever? Yeah. So my, my uncle Dale, he, him and I always have those deep conversations. Yeah. And, and he was the one, every time I, I'm confused about some or he's real, he has a lot of wisdom is what oh, I was yeah, saying. Yeah. So he's from the small country town, like I said, Denellen. They they only got one traffic light still to this day. So. I'm from a town like that. Yeah, so he 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 works on the farm. He goes fishing, he grows his own food. It, you know, yeah. it's stuff like that. You know, you know mm-hmm. what right. I'm talking about. So yeah. yeah, that's that's who I, that's who I got the perspective from. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? But you're right. Uh, and it's the same way over there. And I'm from Apalachicola, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what is that? South wood, southwest of here. You know what I mean? And you got to be some kind of sorry to starve over there from where I'm from, man. I mean, it's fruit, fish. You understand what I'm saying? I yeah. mean, all kinds of stuff just laying around. You know what I mean, man? There's it's so many ways you can that you can eat over there. And, and like you say, you know what I mean? They mess around turning that power grid off. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of us will yeah. be messed around and starve to death. Or, or crumble. Some, some type of cannibals or something. You yeah, understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> For real. Now, I'm, it's funny that you say that because I always joke with my girl, like, we'll be watching the TV, and we're, right now we're watching a show called Physical 100. Okay. Know, have y'all seen it on Netflix? I have not. Man, y'all got to check that one out. So it's it's a Korean show, and it brings in different athletes from Korea. They'll have national team, gymnasts, national team, um, martial artists, because, you know, that's real big over there. Anyways, there there'll be in these challenges, and it's called Physical One Hundred because they have one hundred different prototypes of bodies. You know, to see who's the fittest. And whenever there's pain, like everybody just turn into savages. Like they'll have group activities, and everybody would just ha, da, 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 like just get to acting all crazy. Mm-hmm. But when adversity hits, people aren't able to see through it and realize that on the other side of adversity. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a reward. So mm. I definitely know what you mean. Back to the traveling. I mean, Bahamas was the first place, right? You know what I mean. What's the best place you visit outside of the United States? And yeah. somewhere that, that if 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 it hit the fan, you know that I would go. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I have two best places, and I have one place that I really need to go and want to go. Oh, so, okay. That, that was kind of my other question. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, go ahead. Dang, I kind of stole it out there, <laughs> you know. But my favorite place that I've been to so far is London. I really like London a lot. It seems like it's a lot of royalty over there. I know they took a lot of things from other countries. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I don't blame them because if you got power over somebody, why wouldn't you? Especially if, you, if you're trying to conquer for your people. hmm you know, it's it's kind of one of those situations like, would you rather be with or without? Mm-hmm. But London is really nice. There's, it's on the other side of the world. So you got India right next to it. You got Ireland. You got all these other countries. So there's, you got Africa. Mm-hmm. You know, all these other countries are just funneling into this place. So I look at London as like the New York of the UK or Europe area. And they speak English over there, right? And they speak English, okay. exactly. So everything is real high standards. Everybody carries themselves to a high standard. Everybody's really respectful. Man, even even little things like guns. Guns are illegal over there. So if you go if you get killed it's with a knife, but you'll have mm. more time to get away from a knife than right, right. somebody, you know, holding a nine to your right. head. So 
I would say London and the Virgin Islands. So with the Virgin Islands, man, you don't even need a passport to go over there. Mm -hmm. Just like Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands at least. But the Virgin Islands was really nice. When I went over there, I feel like I was in a movie. Mm. I remember I got to this beach and I was like, dang, like, is is this real? <laughs> so I always said if, if it did hit the fan, I would go to one of those two places. But the place that I really want to go and need to go is Trinidad. Okay. And I have a lot of family over there. Mm -hmm. So my father's side, um, they were from Trinidad and... Mm -hmm. They actually moved from Trinidad to New York because that's what a lot of people did in the early 1900s. They came through Ellis Island in New York, and then they went to Philadelphia. So I know I still have a lot of family over there. And my great-grandmother from Trinidad, she actually lived to be 100 and... Uh, it was either 100 years old or 101, but mm -hmm. she had the island diet. She would uh, eat, like, stew fish, mm. curry... You know, you see moss, all those natural herbs and so right. So I really want to go back to where my family, where a lot of them are from, and that way I could connect, you know. Right. So, yeah. Uh, nice segue into my next question. Yeah. Best food. Best food? Like, my best food or my so favorite in, food? In, 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 your, in your traveling. In traveling? Mm. Who cooking the best outside of the U.S.? Man. It's got to be either Jamaica or Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jamaica, man, I love the, like I said, I, I love the island diet. Um, uh-huh. Everybody knows about the curry chicken. So oh, yeah. I had to have me some of that. And then in Puerto Rico, I had, I think it's called Mofongo. Mm -hmm. Excuse me if I'm mispronouncing it. Right. And then I, had I don't some, know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it has some pork. Uh, I had a pork chop, but it was fried. Uh huh. But those would be the two best places. London doesn't have the best food because you know the English don't really have the that, most that, exquisite that, type right, of palates. Right, right, right. But I would say those are my two favorite foods. But one food that I do like that I've never been mm -hmm. is I like Cuban food. And in Tampa, I grew up around a, a lot of Hispanics, mm -hmm. a lot of Cubans particularly. And we would always go to the sandwich shop. It was called West Tampa Sandwich Shop. Mm -hmm. It's a famously known shop down there, and presidents, senators, athletes, big time people have been to that that shop. But it's more of a mom and pop family based shop. But I love Cuban sandwiches, uh, cafe con leche. That's a Cuban coffee, mm -hmm. and then I love picadillo and pork and rice. So I love Cuban food too. Coolest people. Coolest people, man. I'll have to say. Coolest people. I'll have to say Asian people. Oh yeah? Yeah. And what country was I never I didn't meet Asian people in mm -hmm. I've never been to Asian countries, but right. Asian I'm saying as far as um just in general. Like the whole continent, as far as like India, you got uh, China, like those, you know, those yeah. type of countries. I'm talking about that that you've encountered outside during, you yeah. know what I'm saying, in your travels. Oh, in my travels. Okay. Yeah. In my yeah. travels, definitely Caribbean people. Okay. Um, They just like look at you as one of, you know, another brother, mm -hmm. you know, because we all know we from the same place, essentially. We just right. got dropped off at a different part. Right. So it's almost like. I remember having a conversation with one of them and they would be talking about how their life was and I'll be talking about how my life was. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like we could be, it's almost like we was cousins. You know what I'm saying? Like these people got locks over there. They got the, you know, skin mm -hmm. color is brown, yeah. tannish, you know, so it's almost like the same thing. I think I know the answer to my next question. Where have you seen the most of us? Most, most yeah. of us. Would be I don't know, man, because in the Caribbean it's almost like everybody <laughs> it's almost the same, but it's not. But how would I okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll describe it this way. The most African looking people, the most people who look purebred African, like mm -hmm. they could actually be from Africa, would be from Jamaica. Mm. 
or be Jamaica. And, I'm just and, saying in general now. You understand what I'm saying? Where, where have you seen the most of us at outside of the U.S. in your travels? Man, it would have to be Jamaica or... Mm-hmm. Or... i never been to the DR, but I know there's a lot of black people, a lot of black people in the DR, man. Mm-hmm. Like Even if you look at... MLB players or people who are Dominican, like Big Poppy, Big Poppy. Well, you talking about both sides of that island? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you know and and Haiti. Yeah. So everybody, yeah, they separated themselves down there for some exactly. odd reason. So and now it's chaos down there. It is. It's sad, man. Mm-hmm. But I never been to the DR, but I know it's a lot of blacks over there. But I would say Jamaica and St. Thomas and St. Martin. Yeah. What's a place you, hey, look at, you, you, you don't want to go back to? I don't want to go back to. Or have you experienced something like that yet? Man, as far as states go. No, no, no. Outside? outside of, yeah. Nah, nah, I've never been. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, we can take that all out of there. Yes, I want to talk about. And let me try to find my next question. We was gonna uh, jump into. uh, We was gonna jump into your to your. uh, Let's go to the barber shop. To barber shop. Let's go to the barber shop. Yeah, man. Let me tell you something, bro. With what I've learned from you, and your drive, and your you know, you seem to be more of a sponge than a damn brick. You understand right. what I'm talking about? Right. And, uh, man, the good Lord done place you in, in a barbershop. I mean, traditionally, the barbershop has been a place, man, where you can get all that wisdom just passing through the barbershop, all those lived experiences that's passing through the barbershop. And you understand what I'm saying? The good Lord done place you in a spot like that. What has that experience been like, man, working in the barbershop? Man. Ah, it's... I might need this. I need this footage too, by the way, because my camera just, my camera just. I don't know, it's camera all good, bro. All right, I got gotcha. y'all. <laughs> so, the shop, the coolest thing about it is just seeing different people. Right. Um, all the time, you know, mm-hmm. different people from different walks of life. Mm. The coolest thing about it is being able to help others, though. I feel like growing up, I was always someone to bring positivity to others. And I remember before my grandmother I get that vibe. died. I yeah. get that vibe, man. I get that vibe, hip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So before my grandmother died, she always said that I would, you know, bring change to the world. And my mother would always tell me, you know, be the person you are because everyone else is already taken. Absolutely, yeah. So I'm always just, as an individual, I'm able to be myself and show myself to others that they could be their self as well and bring a positive light to someone's day. You know, with a fresh cut, you could change someone's life. Oh, yeah. Literally. So mm-hmm. that's why I love it. I'm able to have good camaraderie, great conversations every day. And I love what I do because at the end of the day, I'm my own boss, you know. Man, that's yeah. dope, man. That's dope. You know, like I say, man, um, just all of that lived experiences come through that man you know what i mean you're able to soak that up right somebody come through that man you know uh and being that you young and you're getting all that information man you will be able to make just a just a huge huge you know what i'm saying shift however you choose to you know what i mean um but yeah man um what's something that you're passionate about outside of you know what i mean outside of barbering Barbering, you know what I'm saying? Your whole professional pursuit. Something that I'm passionate about is my family. Mm-hmm. Um, just my family is everything to me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm always, like, I love when I go home to have family events. I love when we have cookouts. I love when, like, my family is everything, man. So I know they've always been there for me, so I always want to be there for them. My family is really big because, like, they've helped shape me into the person I that I am today. And I want to be that person in my family that creates that generational wealth or shows them that uh, you could do anything you want to do. Like you said, I'm 
I'm a trailblazer, so I'm blazing. You I'm are. blazing that path mm -hmm. for everybody else. Yeah. So it'll definitely be my family. Yeah, that's what's up, man. You know, when we sit here and we talk to people, we kind of get a vibe. You know what I mean? And I definitely get that vibe. You know what I mean? Your family guy. Yeah, a real big family what I'm guy. Oh yeah. Even yeah. even, and I know my girlfriend. She's this is she's also included in this too. Like I'm really passionate about her. So anybody that's close to me, I would say it's a bigger word than family. Family doesn't always have to be blood, but it could be like friends or people who I'm close to, you know. Absolutely. Some of the, man, I've met some people in my lifetime that's not blood related, but you know what I'm saying? I accept them as family. I think that's some of the coolest people that you will meet throughout life now that I think about it is the people that you accept as family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some of your family, yeah. Some, yeah. Some, some of them, <laughs> some of them, you can't, you can't take them with you everywhere, or you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's I that's your blood family. Yeah, but you, you know, know what I'm saying. You get to choose the one. You know what I'm saying. I accept you as family. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. That's For dope, sure. man. Oh, uh, content creation. Where did that passion come from, man? So I've always been someone who likes creating. I've always been a leader too. And I always wanted to show how my vision can reflect and how I want others to see my vision with different types of things. I'm not the best content creator, but I I always have these ideas. Okay, like, how can I show someone the process of what I'm doing or how I want to articulate this? Because what, to me, content is... It's someone telling a story to someone. So I want people to be able to see a story from my perspective, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that just came from just even, like I said, being in this. And I, an idea would be being in the studio or looking out the window. I see something that I want to talk about. So I'm a journalist at the end of the day. I always Absolutely. want to tell stories. Right, yeah. right. Or do you want to pursue a, a career in journalism? Man, nah. I mean, because you you've created, you've opened up so many lanes for yourself. I mean, man, that's that's just so dope, man. You know what I'm saying? You've created so many lanes for yourself at an early stage in your life. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, I mean, you you got so many paths that you can take. I mean, which What's do you on? want to pursue a career in journalism? I mean, uh, do you want to be a news anchor, the guy that's nah, out there? Hey, you know what I'm saying? This is Christopher Lawrence out the scene, you know, uh, of this uh, mass shooting or a building fire. You know what I mean? I can't. I can't. I can't. And the reason I say that is because that wouldn't allow me to be myself. Right. That was that was always a backup, but I'm not going to use the backup if you know what I'm saying. That would only be the last, last, last case scenario. But for me. I'm gonna pour everything I have into my dreams, and that's not my dream. So that was something that I was good at naturally. Mm -hmm. My dreams are to be an entrepreneur, multiple business owners. I really want to get into real estate and owning my own barber shops. I want to create something that that really has an impact that that I could do what I want passively too. Like I could have passive income, and then I could be chilling on the beach, like on a Saturday, but I get, you know, a five thousand dollar check from a, a tenant or something that's staying in my house. I wanna I wanna be a boss like that. I wanna put all the work that I can I wanna go so hard right now that when I'm in a couple of years I could be like, okay, like I've done everything, you know, that I and can just traveling yeah, and chilling. Yes. Cause I really a big thing for me, I know I don't have any kids yet, but a big thing for me is just being there for my kids, man. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. That's that's the biggest thing for me. I really want to create a safe environment for them. I want to I want to be that dad that not saying that my my father figures that I had weren't, you know, perfect, but mm -hmm. I want to be a little bit better than what they were, you know what I'm saying? That's the goal. That's what they mm -hmm. always Oh, that's tell that's me. I mean that's that's supposed to be the natural process. Yeah, so I want to just take what I have and elevate it, bring it to the next level. Man, let me tell you something, bro. Sitting down here talking to you. Yeah, man. I would bet the deed to my crib. 
Yeah. That you achieve all of that, what you just spoke of. Thank you, bro. Now, unless there's some new drug to come out, you mess around. And, yeah, man, I might, I might crash out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I might crash out. You understand what I'm saying? Be like, damn. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Man, how could he have done that to himself? Yeah. But that's the only way I can see you not achieving your goals, man. And, you know, really, you ask, ask, already answered my next question, you know what I'm saying? What the you know, future holds, you know what I mean? Um, you know, you want to be a great father, entrepreneur, you know what I mean? And with the journalism, I mean, I, I wouldn't have to tell you this, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, you can incorporate all of that into, you know, your content creation, you understand? If you ever decided to, you know, because right now you're just, you're just doing your, uh, you're showing your work, you know what I mean? You're showing your art as far as uh, your barbering skills. But uh, I believe that if you decided to, you know, do some type of podcast or whatever, you know what I mean, with that journalism background, You're right. I mean, everything, man, everything you touch, man, I, 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 I would put money on it. You know what I mean? This brother going to be successful. You know, when it comes to the real estate and all that, the only thing you need is capital, you know, money. Yeah, that's what I need. That's why, that's why I'm going so hard in the shop right now to get to that. To get to that goal. That's you ain't even hit thirty yet. Have you? Yeah, nah, I'm 22, man. I got I got eight eight good long years. Let me tell you something, bro. About 30. 30 is the best age in life. It ain't 21, 18, and none of that. You know why 30 is the best age in life? Why? Because you're old enough to know better, but you're still young enough to make a difference. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So everybody, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, have, to, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to keep that. Oh yeah. Hey, you said, hey you, just, just just shoot me a little credit for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you said you're old enough. To you're old know enough better. to know better. All your mistakes should be out the way. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But you're still young enough to make a difference. Right. You're still young enough to make that change that you need to make. See, the older you get after that, I mean it just, you know. You know, you get the way you about fifth and you tell me, oh, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm finna, yeah, I'm finna I go back to this. school. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. And, you know, you got grandchildren at that, that stage. Yeah, well, right. yeah, yeah. You can do it, bro. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know what you're going to do with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> bro, it's been a pleasure sitting, sitting here talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. getting to know you. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a thousand other questions that I could ask you. You and know might, what I mean? We might we might have to do a uh, another one one of one of these times. Man, if let me tell you something. And be, the door know. open for you, good brother. For sure. Yeah. Anytime you want to set something up, talk about anything. You know what I mean? Uh, if if there's a hot topic out there, what's what's the hottest topic out there right now, Harold? It, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. There's always a hot topic out there. Like this Jason Paul, uh, no Jake Paul, oh, yeah, Jake Paul, man, Tyson fight. What's your thoughts on that, good brother? Well, I know it's already sanctioned. I know. I'm not gonna say I know because it hasn't happened, but I assume that they're gonna have Jake Paul winning it and Mike Tyson. Jake Paul is either gonna win or Mike Tyson going or they're gonna tie. I don't think they'll let you know Tyson knock him out because we all know like Tyson that's. That's the man, you know, that's Iron Mike. Mm -hmm. Everybody know that. But I think it's a great move on Paul's standpoint because he's building up his platform mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. getting more attention, putting himself up against these stars and these greats. As far as Mike goes, I hope it's beneficial for him too as far as his career because we all know he doesn't box anymore, but he does – do podcasts and he's still on social media and things like that. So it could bring benefits to both. And then also the money that's being raised. I know some of them are donating it to charity and mm -hmm. then, you know, so I, I think it's a good thing at the end of the day. I don't think it's going to be a full hard on core, you know, fight, but mm -hmm. it'll be some entertainment. That's how I would describe it as. I hope it's a real fight. I, I, I do too, man. Yeah. I'm going to ask you another question. I'm going to get your perspective on this because I really don't follow this type of stuff yeah. and I really hate this platform. Uh, TikTok. What what is it? I mean, banning TikTok. I mean, what's what's that all about? Man, TikTok, TikTok and I have a, 
a bad relationship because I can never. We, we do too. I can never go viral on there. Yeah. I can never go viral. Um, if they banned it, I wouldn't be upset. But I know it would. If they banned it, I feel as if Facebook or Instagram would kind of push back in because Instagram already has those reels. Mm -hmm. So I think Instagram would be more of a prominent platform. Instagram is my favorite platform to begin with, mm -hmm. but I think it would bring more attention to those other platforms because if TikTok is banned in the U.S., I know it's owned by a Chinese company, I believe, mm -hmm. then I don't even think we can have it back like mm -hmm. at all over here. So I think Instagram will benefit off of it. Continuing to use Instagram rule or reels. I know YouTube has their reels. I mean YouTube shorts is that that's what they have. And then Facebook, I don't know what they have, but I know they have something similar to it. But who, you know, who knows? They might create another version of TikTok, another app. But I hope those other platforms are able to benefit off of it. You know. One more question. Yes, Curveball. Turbo, yeah, I'm ready. You understand what I'm talking about? I might, I might knock it out the park. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I want to hear your perspective on this because you know this is one that we ask. You right. Know what I mean, is money power? I believe so. I believe so. And the aspect of money runs the world, so. When you have money, you can get what you want easier than someone who doesn't have it. That's like saying, okay, oh, I need you to sign this for me. You know, I'll pay you $10,000. And the other person's like, I need you to sign this for me, man. It'll really help me out. But they don't have no nothing to bring to the table. So obviously the person's going to take the money usually nine times out of ten. And we, we've seen that in different instances as with Trump, you know, he's paid his way out of a bunch of things, hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's called hush money. That's mm -hmm. power. They have the power to have people not speak out on different things. It can be used in evil ways, but if you use it in the right way, yes, it is power. I that's believe so. That's what's up. Yeah. How can people get in contact with you? How can people follow you? You know what I mean? How can somebody, how can somebody you know what I'm saying, uh, get a cut? Yes, sir. So you guys can contact me at Christian Lawrence Cuts on Instagram, C H R I S T I A N L A W R E N C E C U T S. And on my Instagram, is, that's the same handle as my TikTok as well. So what you guys will do is type that in, and I have link trees in each of my bios, and you guys will click that link tree, and right there it has all my information. Has my booking app where you guys could book a cut. Has my affiliate link um, with the products that you guys could buy uh, that'll have ten percent off with Tomb Forty Five. Has my YouTube channel as well where you guys can subscribe to support me. My TikTok and my Instagram and everything's in there. Chris, blessings today, tomorrow, and forever, good brother. Hey, thank you, brother. Thank you for having me. Thanks for sitting, taking the time, sitting down to talk with us. Yeah, just wanna. Look, one more message I want to leave with. Go for it. Like I said, my mom would always tell me, be yourself because everybody's already taken. So do you be yourself and be that change that you want to see in this world. And I thank you all for having me. Thank you guys for inviting me. It was a really cool podcast, really cool conversation. And just thank you guys once again. That's what's up. Yes, sir. To the next time, everybody, y'all live right and play fair. I let us. When life switched to sports mode, hold it in the road. When you get so mad, you can explode. Hold it in the road. Bro, just stay focused on your goal. Don't let them crack the mold. The finish line straight ahead, yeah, bro. Hold it in the road. Well, it's with a badge. I never get a pass. We can see straight through your mask. You made a glass, homie. Just think before you do the dash. Cause it might be your last. Lay you in that grass. Face down. You should have put your hands up. I promise you the red I got them handcuffs. Look, we need to change our recreation. Let's focus on some education. How about let's fight for our reparations? How about let's teach our next generation? Big Bad Harold, Mr. Gray Fox. Let's give them motivation. When life's
switch to sports mode. Hold it in the road. When you get so mad, you can't explode. Hold it in the road. Bro, just stay focused on your goal. Don't let them crack the mold. The finish line straight ahead, bro. Hold it in the road. When life switch to sports mode. Hold it in the road. When you get so mad, you can't explode. Hold it in the road. Bro, just stay focused on your goal. Don't let them crack the mold. The finish line straight ahead, bro. Hold it.